Well, there's lots of products and services that can serve your church, but the question is, what should you actually use? And so today on Practical Church Planting, we're gonna share with you nine products that we use at New City Church. Well, hey, my name is Brian Brammer, and I'm with uh, Dylan Dotson here, and today on Practical Church Planning, we are going to chat about nine products we use here at New City Church. And this episode is brought to you by Ambassadors Ministries. Wouldn't it be nice to have a larger paid staff, to have more leaders that you, that could give dedicated time to the mission God has given to your church or church plant? Of course, the answer to that question is yes, but often a church plant's finances make that difficult to do so. And so Ambassadors Ministries wants to help. They enable you to hire the leaders you've identified by uh, helping them raise a supplemental salary, whether that's full-time, pay-time, or, you know, whatever it might be for them to be on staff and help you out at your church. And best part is, it does not cost your church anything. And so they support them in the fundraising, coaching, and the administrative task of raising funds, so you can remain focused of the hard work on the hard work of church planting. So if you want to check them out, Ambassadors Ministries, that's ambassadors, plural, ambassadorsministries.com, or check them out in the show notes, and they can help you get more help on your staff, even if you can't pay them to give people experience and to help you do the mission God has for you. So ambassadorsministries.com. Now, uh, today we're going to tell you uh, some products that we use at New City Church, just because it can be helpful to know what other churches are using. And there's a lot, oftentimes there's a lot of um, options, and it can be overwhelming. Often the, in the Practical Church Planting Facebook group, you know, people are asking what people are using for certain things. And so, you know, there's lots of different products and softwares that we use. We've done an episode way back ago on other ones we've done, and so this is kind of an updated version of it. All the ones that we're sharing in this episode are ones that we've had a good experience with. Yeah. So if we didn't like them, we wouldn't say to use them. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not saying that these are necessarily the best or, you know, you shouldn't use something else. It's just these are the ones that we have used and we like them. And so if you're on the fence about one or you don't know, you know, we would recommend these. Yes. So. Yeah. Here we go. Number one, we use for online giving, we use Subsplash. There is lots of, and I would say this for all these, like we're not getting paid to promote any of these. These are just literally just ones that we've liked. So that, that's helpful. Lots of online giving options. We have used Subsplash from the beginning. I don't really remember why that was the one we chose, but we did, and we've had no problems with it. Um, the, the online giving thing is tricky because you don't want to have to switch your online giving platform because when you do, you will lose givers because mm -hmm. people aren't going to, you know, want to transfer their stuff. You have some people that have just set up automatic giving and maybe no longer go to your church or no longer or whatever and just like never checked it. Yeah. So you lose those. And uh, it's just like, it's just, you know, it's just, it's not hard to reset up giving a new platform, but it's just an extra step for people. And so it's a, it's a friction point. I've got a good pastor friend. He's on staff at a larger church here in the Raleigh area. And they recently, like six months ago or so, switched their online giving platform. And he says they still have about $14,000 a month going to their previous one. Oh, wow. And so they had, I don't know how the previous one worked. They had to like have a con. They to, anyway, they did like pay to extend, like, I think they had a special pricing. So they're like, if they like pay extra money to extend it. I, I don't know sure how There's exactly it works. In or something, something like, like that. that. And yeah, so it's okay. like they're paying extra money because people just, and when you have a large church, you get a lot of people who are on automatic or who just left it or, or whatever. And so you want to make sure you, you pick something good. And so I would not just rush into one because it's quick. The tension point here is that if you're planting from a church or maybe you've had someone who like wants to help you set up and they use a certain giving platform, if it's a giving platform that you don't really like or it seems to be outdated or it doesn't connect to a lot of other softwares. Like, for example, Planning Center is a big thing that a lot of people use, and we'll talk about that as well. We we do online giving through Subsplash, but we run our giving through Planning Center. So, like, like cash or check. And it Subsplash, you know, integrates with Planning Center, so it's like an easy thing. Um, so, we use Subsplash. We've had no problems with it. Um, their support has been pretty responsive, and we've had a few questions. And so, there's lots of them out there. My biggest thing is Make sure you're comfortable with it, and if you have like, maybe like a sending church or maybe a network or a denomination that uses a certain online giving platform that just you don't like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I would. This is one of those things that I would make sure you get right because changing it later is a big hassle. Yeah, so I I'm the one who handles a lot of the finances here at New City, and so uh, Subsplash is is very helpful uh, on the on the back end. You know, as far as or organizing things, mm -hmm. you can actually see um, when like once a week they will. Um, deposit things. Usually it goes kind of through planning center and then to, um, our bank account. And so there's very easy ways to, um, reconcile anything yeah. that looks a little off. And so the tracking is really good. Um, there's, there's this, there's a fee that they take, uh, yeah. that's how they make their money. Um, but there's ways to, you know, um, 
subtract a fee within uh, wherever you're you're doing all your um, your accounting and stuff. So you so you so you don't see like this minus or addition of like fifty or sixty bucks. Wondering where that go. <laughs> um, so it's it's very helpful for for tracking, especially since I'm kind of you know new to a lot of the financing stuff. So I've been able to come in like blind and figure it out. Yeah. So. And all these softwares do cost something. My guess is they're all pretty similar in cost. I mean, I could be wrong on that. Um, Sesame has been nice too because they run a, they give you a lot of reports, which is great. Now. We don't probably run a lot of reports through Subsplash because it's only online giving, yeah. but it like breaks down a lot of stuff. And one of the things that's helpful for me is I, just as a side note, I recommend this to you. Every week on Tuesday, I have a task reminder to look in to see if we have any new givers. Mm-hmm. And then I send them, I have like, like this standard email that I send them and thank them and let them know, you know, how you're going to be updated, if you have any questions. And it's really easy to do like to search new donors in Subsplash. And so we've had no problems with them. You know, that they, they, they can, they, there's code and stuff. So that it syncs right into your website. So people don't have to like go to your web, website and click a link to go somewhere else. Like they, there's like embed options. And so again, we've had no problems with them. Um, they're pretty big. And so they've got, a, you know, a good support and they're, and they probably connect to planning center and all the other big like church management softwares They probably do that. And so, you, you know, you, you can use this uh, giving software that doesn't, you know, integrate, but if you're trying to, you know, reconcile stuff, it's extra steps if it doesn't do it automatically. So but then also grow because the more you grow, yeah. the more people are going to give, the more confusing it can be. It's also very easy for um, those who give to sign up and have an account. Yeah. Like it's not like they make you go through this long week process to yeah. verify your bank account. So it's easy for those giving and also for, you know, the churches that are tracking it. Yeah. So it's good for both parties. I'm guessing most do this. Uh, Subsplash gives people the option when they give to pay for the fee. Yes. And a yes. lot of people do that. And so then you actually get all of it. Yep. Um, what, as, a, as a side note too, it's just helpful to tell people from time to time or remind them that uh, giving through a bank account is better for you than giving from a credit card because mm-hmm. a credit card is like 2.7% and a bank, bank account is about 1%. And so it's easier to do a credit card because you don't have to like put in your account information and then like they give you like a couple pennies and you have to verify. Yeah. It takes a couple of days. So it's, it's annoying. But just reminding people, hey, we actually get more of your money, which is why they're giving in the first place, if you set up a automatic withdrawal, or not, not to be automatic, but it has to be just link it to your bank account instead of a credit card, you will get more of that percentage. And so you want to recommend that as well. So we have Subsplash. It integrates easily and they do a, they got a lot of reporting stuff. And so, you know, we've had no problems with them at all. And, you know, we've never had a reason or desire to switch. So yeah. that's forgiving. Uh, number two is for church management software planning center, which Again, it's probably the biggest one now. You know, originally they started just for like worship stuff, and then now they do everything. Mm-hmm. We recommend them. I, I don't know if it's like this still. A lot of these places too. If you tell them you're a church plant, if you are a church plant, they'll give you a discount yeah. for at least a while, a little bit, and so because they want new churches to be on there, so that you're in there for the long haul. So whatever, if you're starting out, always make sure you say, even if you're like a year or two old. I mean, you, I would be honest, but just say, hey, we're you know they, they want you to use their products, so. Make sure you mention that. There might be discounts. We had a discount. This was a long time ago, so I don't know what it is now. But we had like, I don't want to say what it is because then it could be different. But it was it was a really helpful Dylan thing. said on his podcast. See, right. <laughs> so, um, but there's probably something there. So we use Plenty Center. Now, there's Plenty Center. You can use it for a lot of things. You can use it for groups. They uh, they have people, which is like just where you put everyone's information. You know, the services or so like planning, not just the worship stuff, but also scheduling, like all your hospitality people. They've got something. They've got, I forget what it's called, but they can do... Um, like building scheduling, like for, for renting out your building oh, yeah. and for rooms. And so we've used that in the past. We don't use that as much now just because we don't have a need for it. But when we did use it, it was really easy to use. And they've got some other stuff. We don't use their groups feature really um, just because we have a system that works. Yeah. Um, but we use their planning, like their service planning, which is really Jeez. easy and super easy to work, use. And the, the people like has everyone's information. And obviously the planning center giving is where we run all of our money. And uh, it's just super easy to use and on the other people's end. So it doesn't have as much features. Well, I've, I haven't really messed with it in a couple of years, but like CCB church community builder, church community builder is a big one. At least in the past, they, they had more features than planning center. But the thing about it is like, you want, you want to pick something that people are actually going to use. So even if it has a lot of cool stuff, if people aren't going to use it, then it's not helpful. And so like picking, I'm not saying there are, there are, there aren't ones like this, but like picking ones that have like integrations where people can like log in and view stuff. Like they're probably not going to log in to a church community software like they're just probably not so for us we like planning center because it's really easy to schedule all blackout dates and to accept yes. but but that, that's really the ease of use is like the primary thing if you want people to use it and if you're actually going to use it or your staff is going to use it and planning center does a really good job with that so it also i, I think you can get the things uh, what do they call it a la carte where yes, you, you can. don't have to get correct like 
even like this package, this package, the, the one they recommend, which is always the expensive one for yeah. all softwares <laughs> out there, but it's almost like if you're just going to use it for mm-hmm. teams, that that's it. And you're yep. obviously not going to be paying as much if you're using it for everything. So it's very useful um, for that. Dylan also mentioned uh, blackout dates because the worst thing in the world, it's, it's, it's one thing I'm learning <laughs> is when I've got this whole nice schedule and I'm like, Oh, this is perfect. They're swapping with this person, this swapping person. They're like, Oh, I forgot to tell you I'm, I'm out of town. I'm like, well, <laughs> if they feel like there's blockout dates, then you know before you even schedule it yep. that they are not available. So it's huge for, for us, but um, also with the whole community thing, like Dylan said, like the main reason I think your people will use it is for if they're serving hospitality right. or band or anything like that, just to let you know this is my schedule, this is when I can, am available, and this is when I'm not available. Um, and, and I do like that it, it doesn't require you to get all the bells and whistles. I, mm-hmm. I used to use Salesforce. Um, not Salesforce a lot, but like it's either all or nothing with mm-hmm. that platform for like sales. But then there's others. It's like it doesn't have as much, but you can pick what you need. Right. And so I think for church planning, um, planning center is the one to go to because you can customize it for without having to spend um, extra yeah. money for customization. Yep, that's true. So you can pick the things that you want. And again, we can't speak to the worship side because we don't really mess with it that much. But obviously, it's really good for that. Our band would tell you, and so you can upload documents and recordings and, you know, scheduling the service flow and all that sort of thing. And, the, and they have an app, which I'm guessing a lot of them have the app too, but you actually, the app's actually functional and yes. you can use yes. it, <laughs> which is a big thing. So for our church management software, you, we use Planning Center, would definitely recommend it. And with them or with a lot of these, ask if there's a church plant discount yes. because oftentimes there will be. And number three is our texting, our church texting software, which we use Clearstream for this. Now we have used uh, pl- uh, text in church in the past and had zero problems with them. The reason we switched and this will be a little confusing here. Uh, Clearstream allows for texting short codes. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can get your own custom short code, short code, which a short code is five digit number, and that's better. But it costs literally thousands of dollars a year. And you could just like text groups or serving or baptism to whatever your short code number is. Clearstream has it where you can not do that. I mean, you can do that option through them. But you also could do the general one which is, for us, it's like 97,000, and you just have to come up with unique name. So for us, you can't just say baptism, because that's taken. It would be, like, for us, New City Church, it's NCC Baptism, or NCC Connect, or NCC Serve. So we say text NCC Serve to 97,000. Now, I will say, I, I'm a little confused on this. Someone in, in the Practical Church Planning Facebook group recently said they signed up for Clearstream and said that Clearstream didn't offer the generic short code anymore. I don't know if that's true or not, um, because... I mean, we still use it, so yeah. I, I don't know. But that's why we switched to them, and so we could have, you know, from stage, like for Connect Card, for example, they can fill the Connect Card, or they can text NCC Connect to 97,000. We mention that every week, and most people do the dig- the physical one, but we, we do, do have a couple of digital ones. So um, that's why we switched to them, because we wanted to start using more short code texting, like during Next Steps or during the sermon. I wanted to be easily be able to say how you could do it digitally, especially if you're, like, listening to the sermon later, or you're watching online and you don't actually have a Connect Card. Yeah. So we use them for our general texts, like church announcements. We only do a handful of those a month. And so, um, and then we also do our, our first-time guest follow-up. We'll all get a series of texts over the course of a few weeks. And so we use them for that. Um, unfortunately, as of this recording, they said in 2023 they're supposed to unroll it, roll it, roll it, roll it out. They don't have an email option. So text and church is nice, which we used to use because they do the texting and the emailing. So it's just an automated thing. So for us, it's an extra step. We have to go to MailChimp, and we have to do like a, a MailChimp automation, so we have to put their email in MailChimp, which is not the end of the world. It's just kind of annoying. Um, but both of them, I would say, have been great. Um, Clearstream is, I mean, in terms of texting, it's I feel like you can't really mess it up. <laughs> uh, the pricing is probably similar. I mean, we pay a little bit more because we do, like I said, that short code thing. Um, I would recommend, though, if you don't do have a texting software to get it, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. You know, it's like a 90-something percentage open rate. You don't want to be texting people all the time, but that's why you can get their info. And so we use Clearstream. I think their website is clearstream.io. It's like the actual URL. It's kind of interesting. Um, but that's what we use for texting. There's, I think .io is starting to become more and more popular. I've seen it with other things. Mm. Um, that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> did, didn't you say with Clearstream, though, that there's also where you, ha- you can only add them to one list? When How we've you, done it, it is kind of okay. annoying. So, like, yeah, I mean, you're the one that puts it in normally, but when you when you add a subscriber, oh, yeah. a new subscriber, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what Brian does. You have I to. I just came back from. I was out of town for the yeah. weekend. I'm still catching up. Um, you have to put them. So we put them in two lists. We have an all church notification, which we put them in, and we also have a, a first time guest or a new guest, whatever we call it, notif- thing. And so when you add a new subscriber, you can only put them in one list. 
at a time, and then you have to go back into their name and then add them to a second list, which is kind of annoying. I don't remember if text and was like that or not, but um, it, but it works. Yeah, I mean, even if you're getting like if you've got five new people on a Sunday that f- to fill that out, that's that's great. Yeah, um, but that's still you know you spend an extra ten seconds. Yeah. It, you know, it's slightly annoying. It, it's kind of annoying, I but say it's... annoying is like you could forget to do it. Like <laughs> that's the only one thing. But yeah, it is what it is. So we use Clearstream, had no problems with them. We've also used text and Church and had no problems with them. I think those are comp- probably some of the more well known ones. You know, there might be smaller ones that could be fine. Um, for all of these, I would say, obviously, pri- money is a factor, but I would encourage you not to let money be the primary decision maker behind any of these softwares, particularly if you're a church plant starting out. Because while it's not as a head- big a headache as switching your giving platform, because <laughs> you yeah. could you would actually lose money when you do that, it's still like as you get things set up and as you get more contacts, like it's just more of a hassle to anytime you switch anything. So if you think you want to use something else and it costs a little bit more, I would implore you to go ahead and do the one that's more expensive because that will save you time and headache in the future. So Clearstream is what we use for texting. We've used text and church in the past. Both are fine. Uh, for email, we use MailChimp. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I you know I guess it's easier, especially in the beginning, if you like send like a weekly newsletter out and uh, just to like save everybody's email in your make a list, I guess in your own Gmail or whatever, and like BCC them all. Mm-hmm. But that just gets really annoying after a while to have to do that, and especially if you want to spend special announcements. And so we use MailChimp. You can get it for, for relatively cheap, and uh, we send a weekly newsletter out, and uh, that's really what we use it for. And, um, and now we also use it for the automation because we have to, we send a series of emails out over the, over the course of a few weeks for new people that fill out information. Again, when we were with Texan church, we didn't use it. And hopefully when Clearstream rolls out their email option, we won't use MailChimp for that either. But, um, I don't know if that costs extra money or not. I think it might, I think, I think the automation might cost a little bit extra, but again, all this stuff is worth it, particularly when it comes to following up with new people. It, it all, the money you spend will always be worth it. So you want to do that. We use Mailchimp. That's kind of the standard. There's other options, but you know, we Mailchimp's been fine for us. So would you say if in the future you want to switch to a different platform for email, you'd say it's it's not as a daunting of a task as maybe any of these other software that we use? Yeah, I would say it's not as big of a deal. It's still annoying because you yeah. have to. Um, the two things that would be annoying about it is you have to. It's it's not the end of the world, but you have to move all the emails over. Okay. And if you have separate email lists, which we don't, but if you have lists for like youth or men or women, then that would be really annoying to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then also you t- you'd have to relearn how to use something new, which isn't the end of the world. But when you're used to one thing, you, it's a lot quicker. So we've used Mailchimp, and it's been fine for us, and it's pretty cheap. So uh, number five, websites. This is. You know, if you listen to this podcast, we're really big on doing online stuff. Mm -hmm. And so this is a little bit of a passion for mine, making sure that this is this is really important. We use the Church Co. Um, The churchco.com is their website. And just as a side note, if you go there and you check out their stuff, if you put the word in, if you use a discount code practical, one word, obviously practical for practical church planting, you can get 40 percent off their premium plan, which is fifty dollars a month. You get it for twenty nine dollars a month for two years. And uh, they're awesome. Uh, I've talked with Paul, the guy who runs it. He's a really great guy. He loves Jesus, and uh, their their product is actually cheaper than it's supposed to be because he really wants to help. They really want to help church plants, which he's he's told me. <laughs> it's actually cost them business a little bit because you look at the price for those that know website stuff and you think, oh, that's too cheap. Mm. <laughs> and so, but they do it for a reason. And so, I whatever you use, it's fine. It just needs to be look good. The reason I liked the Church Co is it's super plug and play, and you you if you have no website experience you can update it. Yeah. If you have to have someone else updating, particularly if you're a smaller church and you have to can't constantly wait for them to do it or it gets behind or like it's just you you your website needs to stay updated and look good and they constantly have new themes that you can, you know, switch over if you want to, you know, make your site look different. We use Church Co. They're um they have a Facebook group as well. They're also, you know, you can ask questions in our Facebook group because they some of the guys are in our group as well. But it's super plug and play, super customizable and they have really good support. If you have got questions about stuff, they're really responsive. So I just we've used a couple people in the past. Um Church Co has been the best and the most inexpensive. So uh it's the only reason I came to New City Church. Uh, it's because their website and they use the church code. Um, but no, it, it's, <laughs> Look at that. It's, it, it's not their theology or anything yeah. like that. It's just their website. Um, but no, say, saying that websites are a big deal. Like I know if you're looking for any type of product, you go to the yep. website and it looks like, you know, here's our link to MySpace, you know, <laughs> or some other thing. You're not going to invest any money or even go there, yep. you know? So, mm-hmm. um, but with the church code, I really just, I don't, I'm not involved with it too much, but I will upload like this podcast video. It really is once you upload it to yeah, you. Because we use the church code for our website and also practicalplanting.com. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. 
this website, practicalchurchplanting.com. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had coffee. Practicalplanting.com. Um, yeah, there we go. But Practical Church Planting is the... Is the sure it's not confusing guy. at all. I'm just, I'm just a co-host. <laughs> um, but I, when I go, when I upload this um, video podcast to YouTube, I really just have to take the YouTube yep, just link copy and, paste it, and yeah. copy and paste it, and it then it comes up as... The video, like there's no HTML, there's yep. no that stuff you have to do. And know. it's the same for our sermons. Yeah, yeah, super, super easy. Yeah, so how, I just, I, again, I just, it's, the people, the number one group of people who look at your website are not your church people, they are new people. That is who are going to your website primarily, are new people. Unless your church person is going there for a specific reason, and they honestly probably don't really care. And so if it's, if it's just, if it's bulky, if it's slow, if things don't look good, it, it's just, it's going to be... You're, you're, you are you will lose people um, yeah. on your website, and so we have. I should have looked it up. We've got an episode, a couple of episodes um, about websites in particular. I want to say this though. I just recently, well, as of this recording, the day that we're recording this, uh, in our Practical Church Planning Facebook group, I posted the Google Sheets, the Google Sheet document of all of our episodes. So what you can literally do is, if you have a Mac or a PC, you do like Command F or Control F, type in a keyword, and it will pull up the episode. So we've got mm-hmm. episodes like on websites, and so you can type in website and see where the episode is and listen to it. So we want to make that really easier for you. So that's a new thing on the, on the group. You can sure. search all of our episodes by topic that's cool. and find it and easier. So I recommend the church code. All that say it's super cheap, uh, relatively, and it's super easy. They've got, it's customizable. It's on the one like for us that updates it because it's super easy to do. And then, uh, and they've got great support. So the church is what we would recommend. Uh, number six uh, product is ProPresenter. So again, there's different ways you can do this, PowerPoint, whatever. Uh, ProPresenter is kind of like the big thing in the church world. The nice thing about it is it's not a subscription. It's a one-time fee. Mm. Um, I think they do upgrades every once in a while. I mean, I guess you, but no, even in those, we don't pay. We only paid for it once. Yeah. Yep. Which is surprising because I'm sure that will change at some point because everything is a subscription nowadays. Yep. Pay for it. You don't want to be using PowerPoint or something like that. That's hard to update or anything like that. And nice thing about ProPresenter, there's got millions of tutorials online. It does kind of stink when they do upgrade or when they do update their software because it, things get moved around. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's fine. That's what happens. But I would highly recommend it. We've always used it. I don't know what the price is for it now, but you should pay for it. And, again, having to switch that over later would be a pain, yeah. and having to retrain people would be a pain. So it's de- literally designed for churches and for presenting, you know, the stuff that you're going to do at a church. And so we would highly recommend ProPresenter for your, I don't know what's it called. I don't know what, what, what um, for your screens, I don't know. Your for, screens, for your display, your, yeah, displaying your, purposes. Your yeah, your worship service. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I I use Pro Presenter. That's what's called, right? Because I always get the words Presenter Pro allows you to <laughs> present like a pro. Um, when, I will say that when it does update, it sw- it's changes. It's kind of like Facebook in that way. When mm. it updates, it's like, um, are you going to tell me where that went? Right. So there's some of that. There is a small learning curve, just like any any mm-hmm. uh, program, but. It allows you to integrate so much. It uh, allows you to change the fade of the lyrics uh, based upon, like, if you have a slower song. It really... I'm not one of those to say, like, oh, okay, if if things don't look good, then the spirit's not there. I'm not going to yeah. say that. But there is something about uh, environment, ambiance. Mm-hmm. You see that all throughout Scripture. There's these certain um, moods for certain moments in your life. You know, Ecclesiastes talk all about that, the different times. Like it, it's appropriate to do things a certain way to appeal to people's emotions as long as you don't abuse them. And so having a good platform like pro presenter will allow you to get rid of any distractions yep. that other platforms are just having a PowerPoint would present. <laughs> and it's going to distract you from them hearing what God is, is trying to say to them yep. that morning. So uh, I do want to say, cause you brought it up a little soapbox thing when it comes to, uh, lyrics on the screen yes. and the delay turn them off <laughs> turn them off so uh, i think that i didn't think, i even think the default in pro presenter is like a second or whatever yeah, like 0.8 seconds it's just like it it's is. too long yeah. like nobody wants to because then often what happens if you haven't trained your people which on average you most people don't think yeah. about this if you don't train your screen this is a side note but this is helpful your screens to be ahead of time not it's, oftentimes they change if you don't if you don't train your people your screens person they will change to the next worship slide after everyone's already saying everything they've already read. Yes. Which means they're delayed because people read ahead, and so they're waiting for them to put the next slide up, and then you've got a fade on it, so then it takes 0.8 seconds for the fade to not go away to read it. So turn the fade off, or put it at 0.1. Nobody wants to, be, nobody wants to see a fade. And also, as a side note, train your people to be ahead. As soon as, like, like, for us, typically, it's like two lines of text. Like, as soon as they read the first, or like the second to last word, if it's a slow song, maybe the last word. Yes. But it's just... All, it's way better to be faster than to be slower because people have already read it. 
anyway. They they read ahead and then they're waiting, especially if it's a new song, or they don't people you know, you feel bad if you sing something you're not supposed to, and so people won't sing as loud or as responsive because they don't want to be wrong. So Speed it, speed it up, and also don't have a fade in your lyrics. There is definitely a domino effect. If you're yes. late, then they're late, then they won't sing as much. Then the the band on stage is like, oh, people aren't participating. It's yep. just a domino effect. And so, um, even learning the pace of the song. So when I when I was teaching people to do slides, it's they have already read mm-hmm. as soon as that that line comes up. If it's just one word, they've already read that sentence before it's probably even being sung. Yep. So I'm usually clicking halfway through mm-hmm. the last line of the slide yep. so that. They are now reading the next slide before it's sung, and so yep. everybody's in unison. But then there are times, if it's a slower song, you can even do it on the last word because um, it's just taking longer to get to the next yep. verse. So it's really good to, when we do run through, yep. I try to encourage our, this is a huge tangent, but try to encourage our slide people to learn the song. Yep. Learn the song, it. sing it, uh, tap your foot to it, because it's really going to help you with the pacing of the slides. Yes, yeah, so I Run through is a helpful thing for this too for them to see that. But you want to be ahead. People read ahead. It also makes it harder when like the screen, like it's a repeated line. Oh yeah. And people are used to you going slow. So the line doesn't change and then they won't sing it right away because they think it's supposed to be something else, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it's like you, you leave it up there because you're you just it's you're always slow. So anyway, we use Purpose <laughs> I, I Center. Keep going on. <laughs> turn off the fade of your lyrics and switch them faster than you think you should, and your people will be happy. And it'll be less distracting. All right, number seven. This is also what Brian often uh, pronounces wrong. Premiere Pro. Pro Premiere. Yep, he likes to say Pro <laughs> Premiere. This is how we do all of our videos, and I know nothing about it. Yeah. So, Brian? So, I don't know much about it either. <laughs> um, so, I just started using it, I'd say, last summer for doing some of my podcast stuff that I do on the side. And it's got a ton of tools, and the, the interface can be a little daunting because, for me, when I see smaller icons, that's intimidating. Mm. Things are bigger. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is for – almost like large print. You know, it's kind of <laughs> what it is. It's large print. Um, but it's been – there are so many tutorials on YouTube. I have – like, before Brian left, he really taught me a lot. But even on YouTube, there are so many tutorials. Um, and even if it's just the fact of giving some fades to certain transitions and – Fixing the um, the color that alone will will heighten uh, any videos you post to YouTube. Mm-hmm. So um, there are free programs out there. I was gonna they're, say, they're Brian, why, why should I pay for Premiere Pro and not I not just use iMovie because it comes from my computer? Well, because you get a bunch of other stuff per month with Adobe. You get like the stuff you're probably never going to use, but, mm. you, but you need it. It's going to be cheaper in the long run. Um, it's, but no, what it's if just, I just want to make videos? Why should I I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Was it iMovie? Yeah. I just got a Mac recently. Okay. So what is iMovie? iMovie is, well, this is like, like the cheap version. It comes for free <laughs> oh, it comes on for free. your I Mac. mean, I don't know. Try and then go to... <laughs> My guess is there's a lot more features than Premiere Pro. Go to Premiere Pro. Premier, Premier I, Pro I asked the wrong person because he's never used iMovie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, well, I don't know. Whatever. I think but, iMovie you could start, but yeah, if you want to yeah. do some more stuff, I, I think a lot of the... I, if you're listening to this, you could... I'm probably wrong, but there's probably a lot of coloring and a lot of stuff that... I don't know. We just always use Premiere Pro. It seems to be, again, that's kind of the industry standard. There's a lot of... What else comes with Premiere Pro? Well, there's Brian stuff. used a lot of like After Effects and Illustrator okay. to do like our Lower Thirds logo mm-hmm. that I'm still learning. Um, but yeah, so like for a little bit, you might get some stock ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that comes with the monthly subscription. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 worth that if you're going to use it. But maybe you start free and then you can roll into yeah. that because you're like, okay, I'm starting to get more proficient. But that's just so, what we use. Yeah, we use Premiere Pro. I don't know anything about it. And he has nothing about iMovie. But <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. I'm okay not knowing something about iMovie. <laughs> but it was helpful. You know, a, a other week, uh, a, we had a friend come in who helped us with some of our videos, like Babylon Mini and stuff. And he's, he's really proficient in all this stuff. And then he did some training with Premiere Pro. And I'm almost positive some of the stuff that you learned, you couldn't do on iMovie. Oh, so. no, no, not at all. So anyway, that's kind of the standard. I don't know what it costs as a monthly subscription. Yes, I think so. it's like... You, it's like it might be like thirty or so bucks a month, but if yep. you pay the whole year up front, this you're, you're going to get the benefit. So that's what we use for our videos. Number seven, Google Workspace. They've changed the name. It was Google Apps. It was Google Business Suite, I think, at some point. So our our emails are through Gmail. Um, we use Google Docs for everything. Um, if you have a nonprofit, five hundred one c three, I recommend just as a side note. Even if you're in a denomination or network that you're like already under their umbrella of a 501c3, I would always recommend you get your own. Technically, you don't have to have one. People can give to churches, and it's still tax deductible. But just you never know what's going to happen in the future. You never know if you're going to leave a denomination or something. I don't know. Whatever. And so I'll, I just, side note, recommend your church get its own 501c3 
So part of that is because you get stuff that you only get if it's your specific mm-hmm. organization. I don't, I don't know if it works if you're like on, under someone else's umbrella or it's probably a lot more work. So like we use Canva, which didn't put on this one, so I should have. Here's a side note. We use Canva for all our graphics. Or not for all our graphics. We have a guy who makes graphics, but yeah. for the stuff that we Thumbnail, use, stuff like that, yeah, and uh, for like the podcast and all that sort of thing. And there's a there's a paid version that you get for free for a nonprofit, um, which has been great. Um, it's very intuitive too. Yeah, Google yeah. Workspace is the same thing. So you can have up to ten emails for free, and I think you get extra storage in the Google Drive um, for if you're a five one c three. And so we use Google for everything. I mean, the Google Drive I think is free anyway, yeah. but I, I'm pretty sure you, you get extra storage. With the with what we have, and then you get ten free emails, and it's just you know it's kind of like an industry standard. So there's a lot of support. I mean, I don't really need a lot of support stuff for it, but is there? That's what we use for our email, and uh, you know, ten free email. Like ten free emails is actually a lot. Yeah, emails you, are not cheap, and you can delete people as they leave. So it's like you know you can save them that way. And everyone that seems to have Outlook always complains about it, and people that use Google don't seem to complain about it. That's I, all I know about that. So <laughs> I have Outlook for my <laughs> side business, and I absolutely hate it. Okay, it's coming up upon renewal, and I'm like. Can we switch to Google? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just the way you can share everything, especially if you, as a as a church plant, um, as we've mentioned a couple episodes ago, you're going to have people who work part time or they have other yeah. full time jobs, and so there's more remote work. And so if you're mm. able to share all this stuff seamlessly, yep. that's going to be huge. And, and Google Workspace lets you do that. So that's what we use. We use Google Drive for all of our documents, all of our Google Docs, all of our sheets, spreadsheets. I mean, I even use them for. Um, uh, I even use their what's it called? Not. Not key, it's like it's Keynote, it's PowerPoint, but they have their own version yeah. slides. So, like, if you are a part of the Practical Church Academy, so I do my monthly trainings. I use those slides. There's a link in the show notes if you're interested in the Practical Church Academy. But I use like monthly training, so I use those for my Google Slides. Or like when we do our quarterly all church Zoom meetings, I use Google Slides because um, they're really responsive and it's on the cloud, so you can access it anywhere. So Google Workspace is what we use. We use the emails through Gmail. The 501c3 discount, you can get it for free. So, and then last but not least, number nine uh, for social media, we use Sunday Social. So there's various op- options. I think Pro Church Tools, uh, I forget what they call theirs. They also do um, like gra- uh, what, what what this is is like graphics and social media stuff that you can post. So, the from what I remember, the Pro Church Tools is more expensive. Um, I think that their posts are better. But they only give you like one a day. I mean, you get them all up, up front. Where Sunday Social gets like three or four a day, so they have tons. So mm-hmm. they have a bigger catalog. I don't think they're as good, but you have more options, and so some of them are decent enough. Um, to be honest, I don't use them as much now. I used to use it a couple of week. Now I might use like a couple of month, mm-hmm. just because we're doing we do a lot of our own stuff. You know, we do like a sermon clip. We do Bible in a minute. We do a, on Friday. We, we're right. Recently, we've been doing like what's coming up this weekend, and so we got some of our own stuff going on. We do like a, a bottom line graphic, but if you're like I don't have much, I don't really know what to post, you can. So Sunday Social is great. It's really inexpensive. It's a monthly fee. It's super cheap though for what you get, and it gives you graphics and videos, and you can use them to post consistently. And so that's what I use. There's lots of programs out there like that, so you don't have to like design all of your own things or do your own th- all your own things. You should use some sort of so- some sort of program where you get graphics and videos and then you can repurpose them and you know change the text for your posts and all that sort of thing but sundaysocial.tv is the website that we have used for a couple years now um don't use it as much just because we do a lot of our own stuff now but still use them a handful of times and it's nice to have posts to pull from so yeah i don't think i've touched sunday social at all i think that's mainly just been you um but even here's an important thing is even if you can't do something uh, people who start YouTube channels, you say that even if you can't, you don't feel like you're doing something like perfect, yep. just start doing it. And I think Sunday Social is one of those where like mm-hmm. it may seem, I don't want to say like a template, but people could definitely tell it's not like something you sat there and you created yourself, but it's just letting people know that there is someone, something active yep. behind those accounts. And so if you are posting, um, that's the important thing, not necessarily how the post looks yep. immediately. And then you're going to kind of grow from there. Yeah. Consi- on social media, consistency is what's most important. So if you're posting once a week and it's just watch the sermon, they're going to cut it. Now, we've done a number of episodes on, so- on social media. So you can go to the, the Practical Church Planning Facebook group and get that Google sheet and type in social media or online engagement. Also, if you go to practicalplanting.com, you can get a free church planter's guide to social media, which is like literally like a, like a weekly template of what to post. And you can use things like Sunday social to fill in the stuff that, that you might not yet have. And so all this stuff though, is also you just practice and try and get better at it. And you want to do it now when not all people are engaging with you, because if you start later and it looks bad, then that's not going to be good either. The only way to figure out any of this stuff, premier pro pro presenter, 
you know, clear stream planning centers, you just got to start doing it and you'll start figuring out over time, which is why it's important to pick good things up front mm-hmm. so you don't have to relearn it. And so all of these, like I said, we are sharing nine things that we use and would recommend. So there's stuff we've used in the past and wouldn't ten, recommend. Ten with Canva. Yeah, ten. So nine. Since we, since we said it was nine, <laughs> we're just going to say nine. Ish nine and a half because there's QuickBooks too. That's right. That. Yeah, we use QuickBooks too. So yeah. there's there's lots of stuff that we use. QuickBooks has been fine, but these are some of the ones that we see people ask about on uh, particularly the Facebook group and Practical Church Planning. And so the ones we recommend all these. We've had good experience with all of them, and uh, you can check some of those out. Yep. So that's uh, it for this episode. Again, the things we talked about is ambassadorsministries.com. Be sure to check them out if you want to grow your staff team but don't have the means to pay them. We've done support raising at New City for a long time. It was super helpful. Check them out. If you're on Facebook, the Practical Church Planting Facebook group, check that out. Ask lots of questions. And then practicalplanting.com is our website. You can join the Practical Church Academy where I do monthly live trainings. You can ask me questions. I do also every every week I add a little a short video of some practical ministry stuff. And so you can check out the Practical Church Academy as well. And we will be with you next week on Practical Church Planting. Later. Later.